Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest bread recipe. And in this one I'll show you how to make this fantastic crusty farmhouse cob using this baker's bread cloche. The results are very similar to baking in a Dutch oven. The bread cloche creates the perfect steamy environment which makes this fantastic bread really tasty with the chewy crumb and the crust is very crispy without being tough. Also it's a no need recipe so it's dead easy to make. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. And I'd like to thank the Patreon and Paypal supporters for their very kind help. I'll be doing the shout out and name splash a little later in the video. Ok, let's get on with today's recipe. Ok, like I said in the intro, I'll be making this beautiful artisan crusty farmhouse loaf in this fantastic ceramic bread cloche. For this loaf I'm using ordinary commercial yeast. But in the next couple of videos I'll be showing you how to make even tastier sourdough crusty loaves using a bread cloche. So for a heads up for those videos you'll need to have your sourdough starter ready to go. And you can buy your sourdough starter kit from the website. And I'll give you more information on how to do that a little later in the video. Ok, on with today's recipe. Start by weighing off your water. And it's always best to weigh your water in grams. In this case 335 grams, which is the same as saying 335 mils. But weighing your water is much more accurate than measuring jugs. Right, to your strong white bread flour add your salt and mix it in. Next add your 7 grams of yeast to the flour and mix that in too. Now I'm using instant dried yeast but active dried yeast or 20 grams of fresh yeast will be ok too. I've already tested this batch of yeast and it's working fine. And that's it for your ingredients, only 4 needed in this recipe, flour, water, yeast and salt. Now add your flour mixture to the water and give it a good mix. I like to start mine off with my trusty wooden spoon handle. And finish it off with my bowl scraper. You need to get all of the dry flour from the bottom of the bowl mixed into it too. And don't forget to scrape down the sides of the bowl. To make sure everything is combined give it a few turns with your hand. But don't over mix it. Remember this is a no need recipe. Once all of your flour is well mixed with the water, cover your bowl. Now I like to use the shower cap for this. And let it proof at room temperature for 45 minutes. Once the time's up, turn out your dough onto a slightly wet surface. You probably won't see a lot of difference in the size of the dough ball at this point. And now with wet hands give the dough a few turns as shown. You should see the dough become a lot smoother at this point. Get your dough ball back into the bowl, cover it once more with your shower cap and set your timer for another 45 minutes. Ok, for this loaf I'll be doing the final proof in this Banneton proofing basket. Just dust it with plenty of flour. Rice flour is a good option for this but if you haven't got it just use ordinary plain or all purpose flour. I'll leave a link in the description box to where you can buy these proofing baskets in the UK. Now set that aside for now. Beep. 
Once your second proof is done, your door should have at least doubled in size. If yours hasn't, just give it a little longer. Now turn out your door onto a floured surface, sprinkle a little flour on the door and start folding it as shown in the video. Once done, clear away the flour from the bench, turn the door over and start dragging the dough towards you like I'm doing in the video. Now what I'm doing is putting some tension on the surface of the door so I have a nice taut skin on the top of the dough ball. This is important to get a good spring when it's baking in the oven. Now place the dough into the floured banneton top side down. Sprinkle a little flour on what eventually will become the bottom of the loaf. Cover the dough with a dry lightweight cloth. Now set your timer once again for 45 minutes. When there's only 30 minutes left on your timer, preheat your oven to 240 degrees Celsius, that's 465 Fahrenheit or gas mark 9. Soon as your oven's turned on, place your cloche in the oven as it needs at least 30 minutes to get up to the proper temperature for this bread. And if you're using a Dutch oven, do exactly the same. To transfer the dough to the cloche, you'll need what's known as a peel, just like this one. Or you can make your own out of plywood. I literally knocked this one up in 30 minutes. Once your time's up, your dough should be well risen. It should wobble when shook, <laughs> don't we all? And once again, if yours is still on the small side, just give it a bit more time. It's all down to the temperature of your house. The colder it is, the slower it'll rise. Place your peel on top of the banneton and carefully flip it over as shown. And your dough should slip straight out. If it doesn't, just give it a little shake. If you floured the basket properly, there shouldn't be a problem. Using your pastry brush, gently brush off any excess flour from the dough. Before scoring the dough, you need to remove the lid from the cloche in the oven. I simply placed mine on a pizza tray with a towel on, as close to the oven as possible. Now take your baker's lame or lamb and score a crisscross or tic-tac-toe pattern like mine. This is a relatively low hydration dough so it should be quite easy to score. Don't forget to put your glove back on and carefully slide the dough into the middle of the cloche base. Pick up your still very hot cloche lid and place it back onto the base. Now this bread is baked in two stages. First 20 minutes with the cloche lid on and a further 10 minutes with the cloche lid off. So I'll set the timer for 20 minutes. And at this point I hope you don't mind if I give my three recipe books a bit of a plug. The books have lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in them. All three books are available in the website shop along with lots of other equipment I use in the videos. And by popular demand, the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you to the website shop where all of these items are available now. Right folks, that's the first 20 minutes up. Now remove the lid, lower the heat to the temperature on screen and bake for a further 10 minutes to give the loaf some colour and a bit more crispiness. Now 
Once the time's up and you're happy with the colour, carefully remove this amazing crusty bread from the oven. And it's looking fantastic. And just listen to how crispy this loaf is. Now allow it to cool on a wire rack for 30 minutes or so. OK, can't wait any longer, so I'll cut a couple of slices off and give it a try. The crust is light, very crispy, the inside is soft with a slightly open crumb and it smells absolutely delicious. OK, I'll try a little with some of my homemade butter. And I hope you can hear that crunch as I bite into it. The taste, texture and smell is wonderful and it really is one of the best breads you'll ever taste. So hope you give this one a go my friends. You and yours will definitely give this one a big thumbs up. Don't forget, if you want to follow along with my next couple of videos on making sourdough bread using this cloche method, you'll need to have your sourdough starter ready to go. And if you haven't got a starter going yet, you can buy one of our new and improved starter kits with full instructions from the website for the very low price of only £4 plus postage and packaging. Once your starter is established, you'll have free bread yeast for the rest of your life, so it's money well spent. That's providing you take care of it, which only means feeding it with a little flour and water once a week. So check out our sourdough starter kit video, the link will be in the description box below the video, or just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that'll take you directly to the website shop. And as promised at the beginning, here is the latest list of my Patreon and PayPal supporters. And they are Stephen Welsh, E. Sutherland, Mark Rattan, Richard Schneider, Justin Tress, Lisa Pittner, Brian Cowper, David Hicks, John Garrett and Lilis Lisnawati. And there's also two who wish to remain anonymous. Thanks very much guys, I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well thank you again for watching, please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.